Excuse me, mate. Got two minutes? Haha. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Better You and Two podcast. I am your host, Isaac Frimpong, and I'm an artist that loves to read books. I have a YouTube channel where I do two minute animated book summaries, hence the name Better You and Two. This podcast will be used to talk and review books in just a little more detail. In this episode, we will be reviewing the book Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. So yes, my people, we're back again with another podcast episode on the book Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. And just to do a quick overview on my two minute summary, just in case you've not seen it on the YouTube channel, which I highly recommend you go and check out. Uh, One of the things that I mentioned in it was the fact that this book is not just a theory based book, but also a practical book where Brian Tracy gives you several practical steps that you can take in order to help you overcome this bad habit of procrastination. I mean, for me anyway, personally, this is something that I've struggled with over the years and I'm sure many people out there also find themselves in this same boat where you procrastinate a lot on the tasks that you ought to be doing. And Brian Tracy definitely is a big advocate for, you know, tackling the hardest things first. Hence why he names this book, Eat That Frog, because he describes those tasks as an ugly frog. And, you know, he he uses that sort of analogy that, you know, once you've eaten a frog, that's probably the ugliest and hardest thing that you'd have to do on that particular day. So anything else that follows after that will be a lot easier. According to Brian Tracy, it's just important for us to have the mentality and the mindset that we tackle the most important, significant task of the day first. All right. So moving on into the podcast, as you may or may not already know, what I tend to do is pick out three of my favorite lessons that I've learned from the book. This is a platform that I'm going to be using to talk on these lessons in just a little more detail and from a personal point of view. So the first lesson I'm going to talk about is decide and write down what you want. So Brian Tracy mentions in this book, seven steps to success. And these lessons is steps one and two, where he encourages you to decide on what you really want and also to write down what you really want. Now, this is important because a lot of people live their lives making decisions for their lives based on what other people want rather than what they really want. Now, we've all heard the phrase or the the term keeping up with the Joneses. And, you know, when you think about that term, I think initially you probably just think of someone that, you know, buys a nice car. So then you now go and do whatever it takes to buy the nice car. They live in a certain type of house or a certain type of neighborhood. Then you also do the same thing they're wearing a certain type of clothing buying new trainers and because you're surrounded by that particular person it's like you force yourself to try and live the same way and i guess with the whole social media era that we're in now a lot of this sort of in their face all the time where people you know only show their highlight reel and we find that a lot of people are getting themselves into massive amount of debt just to keep up with the joneses as the saying goes but when i think about this statement it's not just about the material things I also see this as even with your aspirations you can be keeping up with the Joneses again because of the whole social media thing and you know people out there sharing their goals sharing their dreams some might say yeah my, my goal is to become a billionaire or a millionaire or by this age I need to have a certain amount of houses etc etc but when you really break it down you have to ask yourself the question what is it that you really want and what you want is not going to be the same as someone else. Your goals or your aspirations won't be the same as anyone else. You have to decide this for yourself. So I'll give you an example. We had a goal to pay off our mortgage and be financially free. The main reason why I wanted to pay off a mortgage and be financially free is so that I could spend more time with the family. But then I became to realize that paying off the mortgage, yes, it's a fantastic goal to have and living mortgage free would be a fantastic goal to achieve. But in order for me to achieve that would mean me sacrificing maybe another five to seven years of, you know, working every hour under the sun to earn more money to put that towards a mortgage so that we can achieve this goal. But again, I had to to ask myself the question, what is it that I really want? And the answer to that was I really wanted to spend more time with my family. I'm a father of three young boys and, you know, it was important for me to be around my children as much as I possibly could, especially whilst they're in their early years. And to sacrifice another five to seven years, you know, to provide for them, it just didn't make sense. So I had to decide for myself and say, you know what? Yes, paying off the mortgage is a financial goal, 
And initially we was trying to do that within the next five years. But then I decided, you know what, what's better for me is to be around a bit more, which will mean not earning as much money. And we still have the goal of paying off the mortgage, but it might take 10 to 15 years rather than five to 10 years. But within that time, I will be doing what I wanted to do. He also mentions that you have to write down what you want. And this is something that he is a big advocate for. He mentions this several times in the book. And I guess a lot of people don't write things down and there is a great importance of it to write these things down so that you can refer back to it and you can actually make a plan towards it once you started writing it down and working out exactly what needs to be done. So again, when you're thinking about what it is that you really want, make sure that those goals, those aspirations that you've decided is for you not for others it's kind of like when you're at school you have peer pressure and you know people are doing certain things and you know a lot of the times you don't really want to do the thing so let's say for example you're with a group of friends they're all smoking and just because you want to fit in you want to you smoke as well and before you know it, you get addicted to cigarettes when you didn't really want to smoke it you know it's detrimental to your health but because you just want to fit in you take the cigarette Think about what you want for yourself, what's right for you and your family, where you're at in your life. In the next 5, 10, 15 years, what kind of life would you like to be living? And sometimes when you actually break it down and work out what it is that you really want, there may be another way that you've not thought of to achieve the same result. All right, so moving on, the next lesson that I want to speak about that I learned from this book is Brian Tracy encourages you to take action. And not just take action, but take action immediately. This is step number six of his seven steps to success. This was very impactful for me because it's something that I, to be honest, struggle with. Not because I would say I'm a lazy person, but more because I suffer from what they call analysis paralysis. You know, I can be very meticulous when it comes to planning or setting out a timetable for myself. And the problem with it is, although it may seem like a positive thing, if my plan is not perfect, it gives me a justifiable reason in my mind not to move. In life, as I'm learning now, you know, the circumstances will never be perfect. That's why this lesson from Brian Tracy is so important because ultimately you have to do something about what you've written down. Yes, you've written it down, you've got your plan in place, but until you take action on it, you're not going to see any results. Planning is not enough, you have to take action. And not only just that, we have to see consistent action over a long period of time. You can use health and fitness as an analogy. Whether that is, if you're not happy with your shape, you need to take action. You know, just reading up about all the exercises that you can do in the gym, you might learn all the different exercises, how to do a deadlift, how to do a squat, you know, how many reps you should be doing each week or how many times should it, you should go to the gym. You can do all of that. You could be knowledgeable on all of those things until you actually start doing it, you're not going to see results. The same could be with fitness. Oh, I want to be able to run a marathon or run a 5K in, in a certain amount of time. Again, the same thing. You can do all the reading. You, you can even go out and buy all the equipment that you need or the right running shoes, the right attire, etc. You could do all of those things until you start actually getting out there and running, you're not going to see any results. And this is something that I'm trying to implement more and more that, you know what, it's just a thing where you just have to put yourself out there. And that's why this podcast is out there, because it's just a way for me to express myself in a more tangible way. And hopefully people listening to this podcast will be blessed by it and hopefully will encourage others to also take action. So if you have dreams and aspirations, once you know what you want and you've got your plan in place, start taking action, man. We all have a limited time on this earth and we don't want to look back in regret. And yes, finally, I want to talk about the last lesson that I've learned that I felt was significant from this book, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. And that was do something every day. Now, this is step seven of his seven steps to success. And this is something that I've taken from this book and implemented, and I have seen some great results. I've tried different methods, like trying to cram a lot more work in between Monday and Friday and having the weekends off, or even, you know, having certain days where you, you know, you just kind of crash out work where you stay up all night. But I have found that this method of doing something every day helps massively. I also believe it's easier to maintain. When we say do something every day, it's not just doing anything every day, it's something significant towards you achieving your goal every single day. 
it's almost like in your subconscious mind, your mind is ready for a particular type of task where the more you do something, the better you're going to get at it as well. Sometimes, yes, you might have a bad day. You might get up late one day or, you know, something might happen where you just cannot do what you want to do. But if you already make time or certain time within the day to do something every single day, it's easier to bounce back also. So that when you have a bad day, you can just get back on it the next day and, and you know, keep that momentum going. Whereas maybe, so for example, if you was doing the Monday to Friday schedule, if you have a bad, say, Thursday and Friday, you would have worked on it only Monday to Wednesday. And then Saturday, Sunday comes, before you know it, you've had four days not doing your task. What I've also found is when you have this in place, you ultimately, overall, you, you will get more work done. So again, every day is not going to be perfect. You are going to have bad days. But at least if you get up and you turn up, you would ultimately get more done than doing nothing at all. And, you know, that's what tends to happen. Let's just say, for example, you're working towards an assignment. And let's say, for example, you have to write, I don't know, 100 pages worth of writing you might set yourself a target okay i want to write 10 pages every day so that in 10 days this assignment will be done you may wake up one day and you may not be feeling it as much as you normally would and you say you only get two pages done but two pages is better than getting nothing done it's about having that discipline not allowing yourself to convince yourself it's okay not to do any work towards your goal something is better than nothing even if it's a small amount I may not get there on time, but nevertheless, I will get there at some point in time. Okay, so there you have it. Those are my thoughts on this book, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. Again, fantastic book. Right before I end the podcast, I would strongly recommend this book to anyone who's a procrastinator like me, <laughs> which I think a lot of people may fall into this category. My problem with procrastination is, in my mind, I have a justifiable excuse to procrastinate because if the plan is not perfect, I'm just not going to take action. And yeah, if you're anything like me and you procrastinate, you know, you suffer from analysis paralysis, as they call it, or you're just somebody who maybe you might, you might be a bit fearful of, you know, stepping out and putting your content out there. Have a read of this book and take some encouragement from Brian Tracy and just get to work. He also mentions about the 80-20 rule. What he says about this is, for example, in business, 20% of your customers will produce about 80% of your sales. He uses as an analogy just for you as an individual that, you know, maybe if you make a list of, say, 10 things to do on a particular day, only two of those things on those lists, 20%, that will actually be productive or valuable in terms of you, you achieving your goal. And so if you have eight tasks on your list that are not really significant, what you need to do is prioritize those two tasks. But we tend to, and this is another form of procrastination, we tend to do the easier insignificant tasks first so that you know and it's just like you're convincing yourself oh yeah well I'm getting something done but is it something that you should be really doing so again I think it's just the mentality shift and the mindset shift that this book helps you with is definitely something that I would encourage a lot of people to read so that you can get more done in less time and start learning how to work smarter rather than harder it's about quality not quantity right people feel like yeah because I'm doing more stuff that automatically equates to better results which is not always the case stick to the plan once you've set your plan once you know what you want decide and determine what is the most important tasks that need to be done tackle those things act on those things immediately and see how far you get yes my people well thank you once again for listening to the better you and two podcast as I said before I'm your host as a frimpong of hope just like me as I've read this book that you will be encouraged to pick up this book and read for yourself which is the whole purpose of this platform so you can learn a few lessons even if you just pick up one lesson that you can take and implement and improve your life then this podcast for me as far as I'm concerned is a success so I hope you've been you've been encouraged by the lessons that I've learned from this book please also don't forget to like and subscribe and also share this with someone that you know that who could benefit from this podcast take care and God bless